what we can do to avoid regaining the weight. This is absolutely crucial, everyone. It's not about the weight loss, it's about the sustainability. And I will say that until I'm red in the face. I think I already am. <laughs> so, start stacking the questions on top of one another. Throw them at me. That's why I'm here. Ali, my friend, how are you? Roshin, hello. Hello, hello. Can you all hear me okay? Wait for everyone to jump in. Get a pen and paper with you guys if you haven't got one already. There's a lot to cover tonight. Caroline, hello. How's things? You're smashing it recently. Sadie, how's things? Hello. Rachel, how are you? Sinead, Catherine, Nina. They're coming on. They're flying. <laughs> Ayo, how's things? Good to see you. I hope you're well. Okay. Right. Without further ado, let's dive right in. There are lots of reasons as to why we can't regain the weight. Number one. Number one is not having a structure or a strategy. Not having a structure or a strategy is setting yourself up to fail. Just trying to wing it or eat healthily without having a proper plan specific to you means you're being set up to fail and if you lose that structure after you've lost the weight you will regain it you will regain it you have to have a structure a flexible one that you can carry with you for the rest of your life otherwise old habits slip back in number two good stuff Sadie glad to hear it number two a lack of habit cementing if we do not cement habits in positive positive habits into your lifestyle, into your eating, into your behaviours, into your training, then it's just always going to be a chore. And if it's a chore, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. And then slowly you slip back. So if we don't cement habits, it is not going to be sustainable. So first one, lack of structure will cause you to regain the weight. Second one, not actually habit cementing, not having habits cemented into your lifestyle, which will mean ultimately that you will slip back. Number three, number three, not having goals, not having goals. The goal of, oh, I will just maintain this now, or the goal of, I'll just maintain what I have, is not enough. It is not enough. The goal of maintenance is never strong enough to prevent regression. And I mean that so much. I really do. And, well, first of all, let me ask you guys, can you think of any reasons why that is? Pierre, you're a handsome devil yourself. <laughs> Can anyone else here answer that question? I'm not going to answer it for you. Can anyone, can anyone answer the question as to why the goal of maintenance is not enough to prevent regression? 100 points for the right answer. Hello, Roisin. Howdy, Alex. Hope you're well, Catherine. Hello, Lorna. Great question, Caroline. We'll certainly come back to these questions at the end. 100%. Hello, Haley. Hello, Kirsty. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Priya. Hello, Mandy. How's things? Welcome, Mandy. Amanda, great to see you. Pixie, hello. Good to see you. Thank you for the questions, Haley. We'll get back to these for sure. Gillian, life gets in the way. Not strong enough goal. Complacency. Yes, correct answer. Amanda, 100%. The reason as to why people will not sustain the weight loss of their goal is maintenance is because they become complacent they become complacent and what that really ties down to is they can't see progress if you cannot measure progress you're not going to get that kick that big rush of endorphins that you're winning that you're actually getting better at something you need to be able to raise the bar or strive to something that perhaps wasn't even on your radar last year six months ago three months ago because if you can't see yourself progressing towards something you're not going to keep doing it and it doesn't have to be a six pack it can be running a 5k running a half marathon it can be going up and down the stairs without getting shortness of breath it can be anything but you have to be able to measure it because what gets measured gets managed and if you don't measure it and you can't see progress you're not going to be motivated to keep going. Progress is huge. Seeing progress. And that brings us on to the next really important pillar in terms of minimizing and stopping weight gain after you've lost it. And that is results. 
seeing results consistently that ties in with progress if you don't see yourself getting better getting stronger getting more flexible getting fitter getting healthier or your knowledge leveling up you're gonna slip back you're gonna slip back so write these down really important guys there's loads more i'm gonna dive into in a few minutes but right now i'm gonna fly through a few questions okay carolyn you had a great one there a few moments ago at the end of 12 weeks, if you have gone solo, how are you going to know how to tweak your resi resistance training if required? So, first of all, ask the coach along the way is absolutely key so you know when and how to inc increase your program, how to tweak it, etc. Think, ask yourself these questions. Am I pushing myself as hard as I possibly could be right now? Should I increase the reps? Should I increase the weight? Am I really testing myself? Am I managing what I'm doing? Am I actually monitoring what I'm doing? So if you tweak it that way, Carolyn, that will give you some first steps to keep going for sure in terms of intensity, reps, and in terms of the weight that you move. But in terms of your resistance training program, Carolyn, obviously you're not qualified as a personal trainer. So you would want a form of structure there, which is why we teach you a lot here in TSD. But sometimes people stay on for that reason. They want to be able to see their program changing. They want to be able to see it improving. But it's entirely up to you. You can practice what, what we've preached to you in terms of what we've taught you. Or you could stay on and that way have us do it for you. Entirely up to you, Carolyn. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Haley Edwards, how come people can eat a diet of chocolate and then be thin as a stick? Great question, Haley. Okay, so... People, yes, have different metabolisms, okay? Muscle mass is greater in some people compared to others. However, falling back on the excuse of genetics is not strong enough or is not a limitation that I'm going to lie down on. Some people do appear to get away with it more than others. But what we don't see is people who do eat chocolate a lot perhaps may skip other meals. If they skip other meals, it may actually keep their calorie content, their calorie intake quite low. So I've known loads of people who live off crisps and chocolate, but don't eat solid meals. Which means they're obviously very deficient in many nutrients. And obviously we don't encourage that and it's not sustainable and eventually time will tell and it will catch up on them. But the most important thing here, Haley, is to focus on what you're doing and how you're winning and how you're getting better. Because we can change what other people do, but we can change what we do. And if we do everything in our power to be healthy, to avoid nutrient deficiencies, to eat meals that are actually sustainable, sustainable and enjoy the exercise that we perform, we're more likely to not regain the weight. And that is what this is all about, to avoid regaining the weight. Gillian, hello, hello. Roshin, you said it. They probably don't eat anything else. Okay, okay, okay. Let's dive right in. Right, more reasons as to why people regain the weight. Write these down, guys. So far, we have looked at lack of cementing habits, lack of structure, lack of a goal, lack of progress, lack of results. These are all reasons as to why we slip back. Forgetting the why. Forgetting the why. Forgetting why it's important to you to lose the weight. Not consistently reminding yourself why you're doing it. Why you're doing it. The reasons that I get on almost a daily basis on why people want to lose the weight. Well, here's a few. See if you can tick off some of these or if any of these resonate with you. Sick of having a wardrobe of clothes that doesn't fit. Sick of feeling shortness of breath when they go upstairs. Sick of having to choose certain clothes to suit their weight as opposed to suit what they actually want to wear. Wanting to set a good role model or be a good role model and set a good example for their kids. Wanting to be around for their kids. Wanting to reverse pre-diabetes. Wanting to revert, reverse diabetes itself. Wanting to not go down the footsteps of their parents in terms of heart disease, cancer or diabetes. Wanting to be able to actually do things with their kids and their grandkids. Physically be able to move. Maintain their mobility as they get older. Wanting to have the strength, wanting to have the strength 
to be able to do everything in their power to keep their energies up when they're facing a severe condition like cancer. Wanting to avoid COVID. Wanting to avoid COVID. Wanting to be more intimate with their partner and less self-conscious in how they look. Wanting to avoid becoming a recluse. Want to look forward to when the world opens up again and be able to go out and show off what they've achieved. These are reasons why. They don't all have to resonate with you. Your reasons are yours. Everyone's are different. Everyone's are different. They really, really are. They really, really are. Let me know if any of these resonate with you. Wanting to look in a full length mirror and feel truly proud of what they've accomplished. Wanting to show off their body. Wanting to actually say, this is where I was. This is how far I've come. Wanting to look forward to photographs and not shy away from them. Wanting to actually look forward to photographs. Wanting to be able to travel, hop on a plane and not have to ask for a seatbelt extender. Wanting to have their energy levels up through the roof so they can give their absolute all to their career and their family. And not feel sluggish anymore. There's so many reasons and I'll be here all night if I keep listing them. There are so many. Have a think about yours. What are your three whys? Your three biggest whys. Those of you who have done the TSD program have wrote them out. They've ironed them. They've laminated them. They've underlined them. They've bolded them. <laughs> Literally cannot stress the importance of having your whys on point. If you don't know what they are, take some time now and write them down. Document why losing this weight is actually a priority for you now. Because tomorrow never comes and there's plenty of reasons to justify an action. If you look hard enough, you'll always find an excuse to not do something. But if you look for the reasons why it's important, if you look at it from a solution-driven mindset, it means you will find a way. And yes, I will acknowledge your limitations, but I will never lie down to them. I will never lie down to them. I really won't. Okay, so what else? In terms of how we can avoid regaining the weight there are so many reasons we've said lack of structure lack of strategy just winging it we've also said not cementing habits not seeing progress not having goals not having goals not reminding ourselves of our whys and why it's actually important to us not reminding ourselves of our whys next one running enthusiastically in the wrong direction running enthusiastically in the wrong direction okay after you've lost the weight, you move on to the next thing, the next thing, the next fad, the next gimmick. You slowly fall into doing something that's a quick fix that's not sustainable. That is how you're going to regain the weight, 100%. Over deprivation, eating too little, eating too little and damaging your metabolism accordingly getting carried away with the weight loss until eventually you start to lose muscle mass and things become more difficult. That is a reason as to why you will eventually regain the weight as well. Be very careful with that. We do not want you over restricting. If you do that, it's not going to be sustainable. And that's what it's all about. That is what it is all about. It really is. Another one, not having behavior change mechanisms and strategies to implement the information that you'll have learned. If you do not practice behavior change, you're gonna slip back and the weight's gonna come back on. And that is the last thing that you want. That is the last thing that you want. You cannot just say, oh, I'm gonna eat healthily. We have to tackle the behaviors. If we do not tackle the behaviors, it's gonna be a quick fix. And that's the last thing that you want. A lack of community, trying to maintain the weight loss on your own. Obviously, it's all about autonomy here, giving you the tools. But we need to surround ourselves with people who face similar struggles. We do. So it's on our mind. So we're actually more conscious of what's happening. In the inner circle, it is just full of the most incredible people. And I see a heap of them here. And I'm going to say a big hello to Julie. Lorna, hello, hello, hello. Do not settle. Yes. Eileen, how are you? 
Great to see you here, Eileen. Hope you're having a cracking day. If you don't see progress, you do more than stand still. I agree with you, Hayley. Great stuff, Anna. I'm glad that you had a great call with Danny. Danny's our physiotherapist, by the way, guys, in our team. My little sister, my MMA fighter of a sister as well. So, Anna, I'm glad she was helpful. I'm delighted. Hello, Mish, you beautiful person. How are you? That's a high achiever if ever I've seen one. Kate, hello, how are you? Can you extend past the 12 weeks? Great question, Mandy. Do drop us a message in Telegram. We do have an elite program that some people are invited into. Obviously, you have to make sure that you're appropriate for it. So do drop us a message. It depends on where you're at. It depends on what you want. It depends on whether or not we feel we can bring you there. That is exactly what it's about. And some people do extend it past the 12 weeks, but it's completely inter-individual. You cannot ram a square peg into a round hole. It is completely dependent on the person. But great question, Mandy. Hello, Claire. How are you? Hope you're well. Debbie McQueen. Can we please have a round of applause for Debbie McQueen? Debbie McQueen joined us Saturday and she is the beautiful mother-in-law of one of the TSD team. She's an incredible lady and she's also Kate Strang's mother. <laughs> I love it. Keep it in the family. Keep it in the family. The team is growing, guys, and so is the client base. You guys are just incredible in terms of what you're doing every single day. I'm seeing more and more wins. This group is littered with them. I mean, littered with them. If I got a penny for every stone that's been lost in the last 12 months, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Natasha, great question. Tricks for avoiding stress eating at work. Okay, fantastic. The ABC approach is always going to be my go-to. The antecedents, the behavior, the consequence. The antecedents is the stressor. Sometimes we cannot always control that. It can be your boss giving out to you or your boss having unrealistic expectations. The behavior, the behavior is you turning to food. The consequence, you feel guilty. You feel like you've fallen off the wagon. You feel like you've slipped. So we can't always, we can't always control the antecedents, but we can control the behavior. And how do we control the behavior? Well, first of all, we need to ask ourselves what days of the week are typically more stressful for me at work? What days of the week are typically more stressful for me at work? What can I have as a reward meal or an extra nice meal that night to look forward to? To look forward to at the end of that stressful day. What can I do the night before to be extra organized to make sure that I get a full night's sleep? So my motivation muscle is through the ceiling. So I'm better able to handle that stress when it does happen. When that stress does occur, how can I find a way of stopping and taking a breath and not aggressively making things worse? Taking a breath, slowing down, realizing where to go first is a fantastic way, a fantastic way of ensuring that you don't aggressively make things worse. What can I do as a sense of, like, what can I do as a reward that doesn't involve food? What can I do as a reward that does not involve food? Whether we have a bitch with a friend on the phone, go for a coffee. How can I decompress? If I know it's going to be stressful at 4 p.m., what can I do at 3 p.m. to ensure that I'm ready for it? What can I do to decompress, to allow myself to come back in swinging? These are mechanisms of controlling the stressor. If you find yourself turning to food, what can you replace your go-to? Say you love donuts. What could you have similar to donuts that would give you the same kick? What can you do to ensure that you're fully hydrated? Would a coffee also help? A sweetened coffee. In terms of stress eating, what can you do to distract yourself? Have you tried riding the wave of Crave? Giving yourself 20 minutes. I have got this beautiful little thing here beside me. My hourglass. If you have a craving, if you're at work and you're stressed and you fancy food, get one of these bad boys, turn up, side down. In 30 minutes, if I still feel like I want to turn to food, I am going to have it guilt-free. Nine times out of 10, You've forgotten about it. You've forgotten about the craving. It's fizzled out. 
ride the wave of crave. It's called urge surfing. Try these mechanisms, guys. If you haven't already, please write them down. Don't just write them down. Please implement them. Really, really important. And I hope that helps you, Natasha. I hope that helps you. Did a few extra miles. Good stuff. <laughs> Amanda, <laughs> don't call yourself that, okay? Don't call yourself that. I'm going to pull you up here. <laughs> Trisha, hello. How are you? I hope you're well. So sorry to hear it, Jas. So sorry to hear it. Sinead, hello, how are you? Hello, Lisa. Well, look, thank you for being so open and honest. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the whys. I'm assuming you're talking about the whys. All of these resonate. Just couldn't get in. No worry, Sharon, you're here now. The photograph thing, thank you, Jane. Great to see you, Jane. I could literally get buried in reading your comments, guys. Any questions? Any questions for me? This is why I'm here. Any questions for me? Elaine, off to a good start. Damn right. Congratulations, Elaine. I heard you joined the team. I'm buzzing for you. Buzzing for you. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Emma King. How are you? Emma King is an elite. Emma King is striving towards some incredible things. She is, you're an incredible person, Emma, because you are the kind of person who I speak to and I'm like, this person is like a sponge. She just wants to keep learning and she's going to keep progressing accordingly. I know you are. So proud of you, Emma. Lara, that is, a, Lara, you know what? I spoke to you last week. You're extremely brave, extremely brave. You're open, you're honest. And I'm just really excited for you. I'm so excited for you, Larry. First week down. Well done. Well done. Helen, hello, hello. How are you? How are you in the inner circle? Haven't been able to post there. <laughs> Great question. So for those of you guys who have signed up to the SCP program, Sustainable Change Program, for those of you who don't understand the abbreviation, you will have had a message from us requesting that you join. So have a look, Helen, the information that you've had. Ask David, he'll ping you a link in no time and obviously request to join. I'm pretty sure you're in there, but just double check. <laughs> Roshin, you're a star. Lots and lots of positive comments here. Right, I'm gonna dive in, guys. There is more, there is more, there is more. Obviously, the whole point of this is for me to figure out ways of ensuring that none of you, none of you, slip back. I don't want anyone to regain the weight. This is about sustainability. I am not interested in giving anybody a quick fix or a temporary result because it is setting them up to fail. One of the biggest obstacles that I see almost every day, not just for people who have lost the weight, but people who are about to try and lose it. Negative self-talk. Negative self-talk. Guys, Guys and gals, we are a sum. We are a sum of the inputs that we give to ourselves, the things that we tell ourselves, the things that we tell ourselves, okay? So if we say, I've always been fat, I'm never gonna be thin, this is a short-term thing, I'm probably gonna regain the weight, I don't believe I can do it, what if it doesn't work for me? I've tried so many things, What really is going on here is I'm afraid. I don't want to be a failure. I don't want to let you guys down. I've been battling with this for 10, 20 years. I don't believe I can do it. When something has been going on for a long time and when you consistently have tripped and slipped and been given information and structures or strategies that are built around deprivation, hardship, that require discipline, which I hate by the way, you're being set up to fail. You're being set up to fail. We live in a blame world where people say, well, you didn't stick to it. I remember speaking to a PT before, looking at my before and after photographs and he comes over and he says to me, 
Well, Alex, finally, that's what you get when people stick to what you tell them. That's what you get when people do what you tell them to do. And I said, no, absolutely not. That is not our role as coaches. You don't just give people information and say, go and do that. If it was that easy, there wouldn't be millions of people in the world who are struggling with their weight. It is the coach's responsibility to make adaptations along the way to ensure that it's individualized, completely personal, and actually built around that person's life. Otherwise, they're being set up to fail. And this blame culture of PTs and coaches blaming the individual who may have underlying issues, may have depression, underactive thyroid, polycystic ovary syndrome, diabetic, childhood trauma, comfort eating, boredom eating, emotional eating, joint problems, a lack of self-esteem, not wanting to leave the house, an abusive partner. There are so many things that can lead to someone struggling with their weight. And we should never judge anybody. Don't judge a book by its cover, obviously, but this flippant way of talking about individuals as to why, why can't they just do it? Like that's BS. It's BS. You have to care. You have to make changes around that individual. You have to listen, really, really listen, really listen. Otherwise, you're setting that person up to up to fail. And I speak to people every day and they're, they're, they're on a knife edge of self-doubt. They're on a knife edge of self-doubt. And, and they'll ask questions to almost sometimes purposefully trip themselves up. They'll ask questions to find a reason as to why they can't do something. And that's from consistent failure, consistent failure. And it's normal, by the way, it's normal. I've experienced all of this myself when I had my own battles. I did, I did. But when it comes to our weight, you have to care. It has to be individualized. We have to be able to make changes accordingly. And we have to make sure that we use positive inputs. Self-sabotage, self-doubt, destructive messages that we give ourselves. Sometimes we stand in our own way. We argue for the reasons as to why we can't do something. Sheila Richards, incredible woman, incredible woman, who I had the pleasure of speaking to 12 months ago, said to me, Alex, you said one thing that resonated with me. It was that People always say, what if it doesn't work for me? What if it does? What if it does? And every day I speak to people and I say, and imagine right now what your life would look like if the word weight wasn't even in your vocabulary. And every day I speak, and they can't even imagine it. They can't even imagine a world where weight wasn't an issue or where they didn't have to think about it. I spoke to a lady very recently she said that she spoke about her weight every single hour. That's consuming your entire life. It's stopping you from, there's so much more out of life than weight. And imagine what you can do with that headspace. But if you're serious about losing it, guys, and if you're serious about keeping it off, I want you to reread all of the things that you've wrote down today. And you'll begin to understand this is not a quick fix. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be so many people struggling. It's not rock. It's not like people say it's not rocket science. Just move more, eat less. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be so many people struggling. There wouldn't. But really, really keep an eye on the things that you're saying to yourself. Because if you stand in your own way and if you argue for your limitations as to why you can't achieve something, unfortunately, eventually you'll be right. And I will challenge you. And I challenge people all the time. In a caring way, I'll call you out. I'll challenge patterns of your thinking. Because if I don't challenge you, it's very easy for me to say, oh, don't worry, that'll be fine. Just keep doing what you've been doing. I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be fine. That's BS. And that is setting someone up to fail. I will have a tough conversation with someone if I genuinely believe I'm doing it for the right reasons and it's got that person's best interests at heart. I know that. And I also know that losing the weight isn't the kind of thing you look back and regret. 
And I also know that life is so much more than just avoiding full length mirrors, buying shoes and handbags rather than clothes, going back to stretchy leggings and black rather than colorful clothes, being secretly happy that we're not going out and socializing during lockdown, being secretly happy that you can avoid client meetings, turning your camera off and Zoom calls. It affects everything. Has anyone here, show of hands, who has heard the word diet before the age of 14? Who has heard the word diet before the age of 14? Show of hands if you have. Show of hands if you have. Who has? Who has heard the word diet before the age of 14? Jane, thank you for the honesty. I appreciate that. Anybody else? Trisha, you have as well. Julia has. Who else has heard the word diet before the age of 14? Sazie, absolutely. Lorna, Catherine, I have as well. I have as well. And it's no, I'm sure our parents didn't mean it and buy it. Kirsty as well. Everyone's got, I think everyone, Kate Stranks. Cheryl, you're about 10. Like, guys, let, this is going to sound harsh, but I'm going to say it. Let our parents' mistakes be the warning sign. Whether the parents' mistakes are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or revolving, having a life revolving around the word diet. This is the example that sometimes has been set. Don't be a warning sign for your own kids. Be an example. Be a role model. Break the mold. Do not use the word diet. A healthy weight. Don't say, don't say I want to be thinner. Say I want to be a healthy weight. Don't say the word diet. Use the word lifestyle change. Sustainable lifestyle change. Talk about performance to your kids rather than what dress size you want to be. Say I want to be able to walk up 10 flights of stairs and not be out of breath. I want to be able to walk to the shops and never feel tired. Talk about performance. Talk about activity, mobility. I want to be able to avoid the home. I want to be fit till I'm dead in that ground. I want to be <laughs> lowering my own coffin. I want to be lowering my own coffin. You know, the examples we set are huge. And we have been set up in a culture in so many ways where it's okay to talk about diets. It's okay. It's the biggest topic of conversation. It really is. At work, how many of you have spoken about how to lose weight? Oh, I need to lose weight. Every day I speak to people and I say, what are you for a living? I'm an online dietitian. I work online with some incredible people all over the UK. Oh, I could do with you. I get a flipping comment. Oh, I could do with you. Oh. I could do with you moving into my house and helping me. This flipping comment, what it is, is it someone making a little joke of something that actually is quite true and real for them? Sometimes we laugh over our real feelings. It makes us justify what they are. If we use self-talk like, I know how to do it. I've lost the weight before. This downplays the problem. This downplays the problem and inadvertently reduces the urgency to change it. These are again coming back to inputs. Guys, psychologically, I cannot stress enough how important the psychological aspect of weight loss really is. It probably is, if not the most important. It's why we focus the majority of our, our attention on behavior change. And you'll have noticed this from last Monday when you met the team, our psychologist, our behavior change coaches. It's about behavior change, changing behaviors. And it's about not settling. If you found yourself saying, is this all that there is? Is this my lot? I've tried so many things. Has your husband or has your wife said, oh, here he goes again. Oh, here she goes again. The next fad, the next gimmick. All that eats into your self-confidence, your self-worth and your self-belief. And it leads to you consistently almost expect to fail. These are all inputs. Please write these things down, guys. If any of these things resonate with you, be careful because you're on a fine line because eventually one of two things is going to happen. A, 
You'll damage your metabolism from losing weight the wrong way or B, psychologically, it'll be absolutely crushing if you regain the weight. Another really crucial, crucial, crucial aspect of sustaining the weight loss is monitoring. Monitoring. If you haven't used a weighing scale in a number of months, be careful. If you find yourself not looking in a mirror, you're avoiding monitoring. Not hopping on a weighing scale, you're avoiding monitoring. If you find yourself wearing stretchy clothes rather than fitted, you're avoiding monitoring. Which means that if you're starting to slip, you're not going to know about it. Because it's a temporary, short-term gratification of avoidance of pain. But unfortunately, the long-term result of that far outweighs the low feeling you get when you look in the mirror. It's like try try and pull your head out the sand if it's in it i don't mean that in a disrespectful way if you find yourself downplaying the problem or if you find yourself comparing yourselves to others and saying oh it could be worse could be as bad as that person down the road that doesn't change how you're feeling about yourself it's not about anybody else it's about you and if you find yourself struggling to justify put yourself first putting yourself first you're in great company there's loads of people who struggle as well but if you truly want to be there for your family and if you truly want to be at your best in your career you've got to prioritize number one you've got to prioritize number one and i really mean that i really really mean that do you know what these messages <laughs> thank you so much Lorna Gant looks in a full-length mirror every day now. Damn right she does. How many stone have you lost, Lorna? How many? Lisa Story, thank you for being so open. Drop us a message. I've also put a link, by the way, guys, those of you who do want to sign up. We'll have a link in this video for people who want to have their free complimentary weight loss audit. That would at least allow us to figure out the reasons why you're stuck. The very least. Do click the link. Do not put it off. Do not put it off. Because God knows there's always going to be a reason not to do it. If we always find a problem, if we always look for a problem, we'll find it. But what if it works? What if it works? What if all these people aren't actresses? <laughs> what if I actually am a registered dietitian? Okay. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Yes, Mesh. Love it. Hello, Helen. I usually weigh myself every morning to monitor my weight. Great stuff, Helen. I think it's important to monitor. Because if we don't monitor, we can't manage. It's really important. Perhaps you're trying too hard. Here's a story for you at about a shoulder injury. Thank you for sharing, Haley. Jane Watson, if I didn't clear my plate, I was told there was poor African children who were starving. Yes, the next time someone says that to you, this is the response. While I am extremely sorry to hear of the people in the world who are less fortunate than I am, one thing that I'm also aware of is that heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and now COVID is killing millions of people every single day. And for that reason, I am not willing to become a statistic. I'm not willing to do that to my kids or my grandkids. I'm not willing to put them through that. So I'm going to prioritize myself now by not clearing my plate because I know, I know, that every single time I do that, day by day, I'm slowly increasing my risks of me not being there. Of me not being there. And there's a couple of doctors on this program who understand this more than most. Myself and Babs were walking on the beach there a few days ago. There's a there's a small beach very close where we live. And as we pulled in, there was a paramedic there. There was a lady running, there was Gar the Cars, those of you who don't know what Gar the Cars are, they're police basically in Ireland. And they're rushing towards, well, towards the beach. And we didn't go down, gave them privacy, obviously went left, went the opposite direction. And the following day, we found out from a lady who was walking a dog, that very, very sadly, a man in his 50s had a heart attack and very sadly passed away. There was a beautiful memorial there for him. But this is how quick life can be taken from us. We don't know. We don't know. And I could be hit by a bus tomorrow. 
But all I do know is I'm going to do everything in my power to maximize my chances. And I'm going to do everything in my power to encourage that all of you wonderful people like Gemma, like Gemma, like Michelle, like Rachel. All of these people. Lorna Gant, two and a half stone and two dress sizes down. These wonderful, incredible people who have just refused to lie down to their limitations. And I hope you found this helpful, guys. I hope you have. I hope you've taken notes because what I'm saying is important. What I'm saying is important. The most scary thing about obesity and struggling with their weight is that it doesn't happen overnight. And because the health complications don't happen overnight, it's very easy for us to not make it urgent, to make it, oh, I'll do it tomorrow or the day after that. Of course, if you lost a leg and were bleeding out, you wouldn't say, oh, you know what, I'll wait till tomorrow. But sadly, because being overweight, it, well, the complications are slow. Slowly we get signs, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, shortness of breath. It means that we put things off. But unfortunately, as Steve Jobs says, if I live my day as if it was my last, eventually I'll most certainly be right. And unfortunately, someday you will be right. Someday it will be your last. So you gotta ask yourself the question, what have I done to maximize my chances? What have I done to stack the odds in my favor? What positive things have I said to myself to ensure that I've been at my absolute best in every single aspect of my life? How have I not settled? Where have I refused to settle? Where have I challenged my own assumptions of my limitations? Where have I questioned them? What, what if it could be done? What if this vision of actually being free from the weight actually became a reality? And when you start making decisions based on vision, not based around fear or self-doubt or negative self-talk and self-sabotage, your whole world can open up. Your whole world can open up. So guys, if you haven't already, click in the link, book in a free complimentary audit with myself or one of our team. Let's see if we can change your life as well. Do not put up with being unhappy. Life is short. Don't put up with it. It has been such a pleasure speaking to each and every one of you. I wish you an incredible Monday, a smashing March. And you know what? Prioritize number one. Prioritize number one. That enables you to be there for everybody else. Have a wonderful night, you beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people of high achievers.